channel, welcome to Seen Through Glass. Welcome to a freezing cold day in Long Island, New York. Today, I'm gonna to be living out my Americana automotive dreams. Right now, you find me sitting in a 1967 Shelby GT500 Ford Mustang. Alongside me, the next two generations of the GT500s, one from 2008 and one from 2019. I think these three cars represent some of, if not the best Mustangs ever made. American viewers may like to argue with me there, but as a Brit, as someone who didn't grow up here, someone who doesn't truly appreciate and understand all of American car culture, these are icons. The cars that I've always wanted to experience every time I come to this country, but I am yet to do so, especially in the 2008 car, which kind of terrifies me, I gotta be honest. But as I mentioned, I'm kickstarting in the Origin, which is not only my first time driving one of these Shelby GT500s, but also my first time driving a 60s Mustang. So despite the fact it is freezing cold and very windy, and I think about to rain, which is gonna make this experience quite sketchy, I am super excited. Now there is so much for me to discover and learn about for all three of these cars today, but initially, yeah, I wanted to start here with, well, the origin story and just such an iconic looking car. Now the first surprise of the day has been, in fact, I don't really fit. If I sit up straight, my head is buried into the roof liner. If I put my feet on the pedals, well, my legs don't really fit underneath the steering wheel, so I can't really heel and toe. And I might need to, because this car's equipped with the optional four-speed gearbox, which is quite a rare option, because a lot of these 60s GT500s came with an automatic. Uh, but yeah, this one's got the manual shifter, which is super nice to see, and it's gonna be engaging when we get out and drive. But yeah, it's gonna have to take it slow and easy. We're gonna be taking it slow and easy in general, because as I say, it's cold. Also, these cars are super high powered. This thing, back in 1967, was producing just over 350 horsepower from a seven litre V8, which as far as I can understand, was essentially a Le Mans engine that Carroll Shelby used in some of his race cars, but then eventually fitted to this Mustang. I mean, to put that into kind of some context, a Ferrari 275 GTB in its juiciest form, was putting out like 300 horsepower. So yeah. This thing a bit of a joke back in the day and still right now, I mean, that's not to be laughed at. All that power going to the rear wheels, quite small wheels and uh, yeah, big torque band. Our red line looks like it's about 6,000 RPM and yeah, if I give it a few blips at the throttle. <laughs> the whole car flexes and twists. It's getting so much appreciation from people who are walking through the car park because yeah, I think whether you're a Brit like me, a European or an American, you see this thing and you're like, yeah, that's real, that is proper, but it's just insane. Uh, you may note that the uh, engine's been running this whole time. That's because we have turned this car off a couple of times today and struggled to get it back on, I think, because it's so cold. So we just, we just left it running, but it's quite nice for me because it's keeping me warm. But I think that's enough initial chat about, yeah, the first kind of impressions. I guess we've got to go for a bit of a drive and see what this thing is like out on the road. Now, I've got to shout out the team at Ryan Friedman Motorcars for arranging this day. Uh, you'll be able to see in a second that, well, the three Mustangs I'm here to review aren't the only Mustangs with us. There's two other Shelby Mustangs, including this insane orange convertible, which is our camera car. Uh, we've come out to the, I think it's Jones's Beach, because essentially we've got this long old strip of, of highway, um, where I think it'll be the perfect place to test these cars. We got out of the junction, so that's a good start. <laughs> because yeah, let's face it, Mustangs, even Shelby GT500s, they're gonna be best in a straight line. That is just a, a plain fact. Oh my God, there's like so many geese here. It's like thousands of geese, we're gonna to have to be careful with that. But nice and slow to begin with, uh, European viewers. Uh, American speed limits are a little low in comparison to ours, so I'm just gonna be cruising for now. I'm just getting used to this thing. Of course, no power steering and quite a lot of play in the steering wheel before anything happens. The biggest thing for me is just how long that bonnet is and it kind of rises up. Obviously there are various bumps to house in that massive engine, but it's kind of, it's more than that. It just takes up, I mean, you can just, oh, there's a lot going on out there. I mean, these sort of comfortable armchairs, which is weird, as you can see, I'm like a very relaxed driving position. But if we um, come down a gear, try and bring these revs out, let's see what happens. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's actually quick. And there was a lot of wheel spin there. Oh, it's a hunking great V8. The gearbox actually feels quite mechanical and nice. I thought it was going to be a bit sloppy. But the shifts are good. Oh, I'm now I'm in a whole different frame of mind. I was like, okay, yeah, fine, it's going to be fast. But it's a 1967 car. No, brakes are interesting. It does say disc brake on the pedal. They don't feel particularly disc like. <laughs> so I'm just going to be very calm here. But there we go again, second gear. Let's do a big old pull. <laughs> it just spins and spins and spins. <laughs> this thing is hilarious! It's wild! The house in the back getting some shots for me. I mean, the thing is you can, like, you can cruise. Like, I can't just do this and just go for miles, but now I know what it's capable of. I just want to... <laughs> Every time I'm doing that, I'm spinning up the wheels. Look, I don't know if you can tell. It's a monster, this thing. But in just the best, naturally aspirated way, it's all up at that top end. That's why I keep doing these pulls, because all the power is over 4,000 RPM, and I just want to absolutely get up there all the time. I'm going to slow right down, because I've got no traffic behind me. I'm going to try and come, just do a bigger pull. I'm actually going to do a stop, because there's literally no traffic. So let's go from here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Big burn out! Oh, still spinning! Yes! <laughs> America! America! Oh my god! Yes! Yes! It's the best thing in the world! I gotta get me one of these! Oh my god! Smell of burning rubber, people! It is so different to the European 60s cars I've driven. It's just big and in your face. I mean, there were no corners here. That's got to be seen as a good thing, right? Because if we did want to steer... Well, look, look how much I'm moving the wheel. We're still going in a straight line. As I say, the brakes don't really seem to do anything, but... It's just... It's a powerhouse. And actually, if you think about it, it was really advanced for its time, okay? Whilst it is about the straight lines, these things were so competitive in their period for track racing. Okay, fine, of course, the Cobras are what actually can be done on the European stage. But the Mustangs still today are used in historic racing. So whilst it doesn't feel that nimble, it can be competitive. Just go through. Yeah, then everything starts to shake. Yeah. <laughs> there they go, club box is open. Yeah, you've got to kind of keep it within reason. I'll tell the guys that we can, uh, we can go back. Corner and brakes to be tested. Oh, this is just too good. Also, that orange car is hilarious. See how I get out of this junction. We've got a car coming, so I'll give it two seconds. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, America. I adore this thing. They got a big smile on their face. Well done, Carol Shelby. I will be fascinated to see what happened 40 years later when they came back with that second generation. Oh, it feels like the throttle pedal's a bit stuck. That definitely happened. The throttle pedal has got a little stuck, so it's taken a bit easy. Make way back. I keep trying to look in that side view mirror, but it's not doing anything for me, so I'll ignore that. Uh, let's go back to the car park and jump into, yes, the Gen 2 car, which has 
more than double the horsepower of this thing. Double. Terrifying. We seem to have attracted the attention of the local law enforcement. I mean, not, not a big surprise, I guess. Uh, it means the next section of this drive might have to be a little bit low key, but that, that's no bad thing because yes, I am now in the 2008 GT500, but this is a super snake. Now, I don't know what was going on in this period at Ford and Shelby, but for some reason, they decided to supercharge this V8 and give it, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's been happening. Oh, I did mention it. Bump starting has been uh, <laughs> the way to get that car going today. You know, 60s cars, what can you say? Uh, anyway, back to this one. <laughs> um, you're getting a real raw look uh, at some filming today. But yeah, so 725 horsepower, supercharged V8. It's insane. It's so unnecessary. But of course, this was also the return of the Mustang for Ford. This, this Gen 2, it kind of tried to reminisce to the old car, but then we've got this insane dashboard, which is as high as the bonnet. So I sit much lower in comparison to the bonnet, but it's, it's even more intimidating. It stretches out again in front of me. There you go. The 67's up and running. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed and a bit scared to be driving this car. Much smaller little shifter, but similar uh, white ball. This is a six speed. And uh, yeah. Right then, out on the open road, second gear. <laughs> yeah, try to kill me. Try to kill me. I saw that coming. It, it literally does not want to put the power down. Th third gear. Okay, third gear you can actually get somewhere. I do worry if you're really getting into it, and second and then third, it will just... Oh look, there's a, a completely stock second gen Mustang. They were funny looking cars, weren't they? So boxy. But let's just do a faster, controlled pull. And just go... Well, yeah, I forgot I've got two more gears. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a disaster. I was like, Harrison, I'm going to do a flyby. No, I'm not. The thing is, I feel like it's a bit silly. It's not maybe got the charm of the old car. At least at slow speeds. At least at slow speeds. Maybe this thing's all about the, the psycho speeds. It's the kind of car that, well, it could all go wrong very easily and very quickly. And actually, as we were leaving the showroom this morning, someone said, who's taking the crowd killer? Meaning this, because it's the, it's the kind of car that snaps out of control and kills crowds. It's not a very good thing to talk about, but we're going to take a nice, sensible cruise, get some beautiful shots of the car on our way to a lunch spot, because we need to get out of the area because of the police. <laughs> um, but also, I'm hoping that maybe this thing, well, I want to see what happens when you turn this round corners, because look, the steering actually does stuff compared to the old car. Whether it does stuff well or not, I don't know. This, it's a drag strip car, this car, isn't it? It really is just about that performance. I'm gonna just lean into the throttle. Oh, it's like an airplane. That supercharger is so loud. It's like, you know, when you sit at the start of a runway and it all just builds and builds and everything shakes and then you go, that is what's going on here. But you've got to be in the high gears because if you come lower down, yeah, it just, just doesn't want to. You've got to be so smooth and gentle on that throttle pedal. Whoa. It's a bit of a gimmick, but quite cool. But I feel like the supercharger's lost the Americana part of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I want it to be like, instead it's all. Let's see what happens when we get further down the road. Eventually, fingers crossed, we'll make it to lunch without dying. I will note though, this interior is trash. <laughs> it's trash, like it's awful. I'm just quickly going to interrupt things and take you from old school Mustangs to quite a new age problem 
that I think I've got a solution for. Uh, big trips like this one to New York just simply wouldn't be possible without supporters and partners of the channel. And today I've been supported by Incogni, who have very kindly sponsored this part of the video. I don't know about you, but recently the spam folder in my inbox has just been going insane. I've been receiving more junk emails than ever before. Over and above that, I've also been receiving loads of like phishing calls. Uh, not calls inviting me to go fishing, but you know, random companies being like, oh, we heard you were in a car accident. Uh, and I'm always like, how? And then I realize it's because we are endlessly providing our information to random companies. When you're signing up to email newsletters or joining a new website or even just buying things, you're providing so much of your personal information. Even when you check out at a till in a physical store now, they ask you for your email address or your address. And I'm always like, why? It's because they're selling that information on to marketeers. Problem is, some of those lists sometimes get hacked and sometimes those lists are sold on to companies that don't always have your best interests in place. And that's where Incogni steps into place. When these guys reached out, I was like, okay, you don't even have to support the channel. I just wanna use your service because they sit there monitor and remove your information from all of these lists. Once you sign up, and I recommend you sign up for like, well, a continuous plan, they will just keep going out there, removing you from the list. And if one of these companies push back and says, no, no, they will make sure that they see through to the finish to get that data taken back, ensuring that, well, you stay in charge of who has your personal information. It's a godsend this. I'm so grateful that this exists and I'm wondering how and why it hasn't existed before. So even if you don't think this is a problem, even if you're like, I don't get that much junk email, trust me, your information is out there on list and you're not aware of it. So it's well worth checking out Incogni and they've given me a special link which gives you a huge discount. All the information is in the description box below. Go and check it out. It's well worth looking into and I've honestly been so grateful for the service. So thanks to them for supporting the channel. I hope you guys find it useful. Once more, link is in the description below. Go check it out. For now, let's get back to some Mustangs. So I, I, got, I got a little cocky in the super snake and I was like, oh, you know, like I can, I can slide this thing, right? Like, came oh, you did it on a turn? <laughs> I'm like, I got, this, I got this, yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his reaction because it's his car for sale. Dude. Yeah, we've already discussed, this is going to need a big push down that hill. Yeah, one chance to <laughs> and start And it's going to be a great shot, like right in front of All-American and all GT500. <laughs> well, you're making the video, and, and actually we should mention, so where yeah. have you bought me? This is All-American Driving. It's yeah. literally the name of it yeah. is All-American Driving, yeah. which I'm so happy about. Some cheeseburgers. Guys, yep. thank you for arranging this day. Thank is you this for, for you, is this like a disaster? Is this like a cliche disaster, or are you actually having fun? Uh, we're both. We're having okay. fun. Both. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. You said it's a bit like me taking you to like Buckingham Palace in a Jaguar E-Type and getting fish and chips. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a and good day, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because anytime I've spoken to an American about American cars, you're often like a tiny bit disrespectful. Like I, I've mm -hmm. yet to meet an American who like genuinely loves muscle cars. What's that about? I mean, they're just, it's fun. It's just fun, easy, simple, straight line fun, light to light. Like that's, you know, it's fun. Mm -hmm. well, we could hang with the boys on a Saturday. We can have burgers. Mm -hmm. Burgers. Like this, all mm -hmm. hanging up. Yep. Exactly. It's got star, but it's not about Tail of the Dragon. No. No, okay. This is like we're having a good old time. Fair. Okay, yeah. fine. So it's more about the life that comes with the car, not about out and out performance. Yeah. Where the yeah. European stuff is like, let's go to the track. No, this is like feel and fun. Okay, fine. Okay, look, yeah, hey, look, you're, no, you you're the fun. first American that's yeah. starting to sell me on the muscle yeah. car route. <laughs> it's great. No, it's See? a good time. You it's mean, a proper good time. Yeah, and you're not going to understand it until like you drive in and experience it. For me so far, this car's been the one. Yeah, or okay. I, yeah, like, I yeah. like this, like the Super Nate thing, but it's a bit of a gimmick. Like right. 725 <laughs> horsepower, that's not even normal today. I know. <laughs> like if but, Bugatti put out a 725 horsepower car, you'd be like, oh yeah, okay, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but that's in 2008. That's why. And it's also Eight. sub 100k. Yeah. And the interior is a disaster. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, if we're like on Top Gear right now, right now, like, I think it's, the, it's all, it's an American car, like interior. Mm -hmm. This for me, this for me is. But this is an antique and yeah. this is like beautiful. This is just like, when you're driving this, you feel like you're not gonna, like if it, it's just an old vintage machine that has so much 
raw feel and power. It's got power, huh? It's got power. Like mm. when you get on, it's it's like surprising, right? You're yeah. just like cruising, right? And then suddenly it really gets up and, and then, goes. And then you go in like second, mm. you're in it, and it's like the tires are lighting up, and you're like, wow. Here we, here we go. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> well, I got one more to drive today, but before we do that, I'm gonna have more of these because I've had one bite of this thing so far. It's yeah, so good. Yeah. We're gonna get like yeah, four yeah. more. I didn't want to like stuff my face. Yeah, on my <laughs> <head>. <laughs> no, no, anyway. <laughs> it's all good, man. We're gonna eat some cheese. All right, here. cheers. The 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 track exhaust in this thing <laughs> is, is so that is outrageous. <laughs> This one's this one's quite good. Yeah. This one's quite good. This yeah. One, that's probably the most refined like Mustang. In it's a like while. a yeah. It's like an actually good car. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we are in the in the newest GT500 from Shelby or Ford, a uh, car which I drove a few years ago in LA with Tony when we went there to do some stuff for the podcast and really enjoyed. We actually took them up and well, we took this into the canyons uh, alongside the new Corvette and yeah, I mean. It's a, it's a good car. Still has ludicrous power, 760 horsepower. But if you think of the jump they did from the 67 car to the 2008 car, this is only a, a minor up rate or, or, or increase in power, only 40 horsepower or so. But yeah, the base car is just so much better. This generation of Mustang, it's a good car. It's a really good car. And it just deploys or, or or uses that power in a better way. And the chassis and the steering, it's a cool bit of kit. I like the way it looks, I love the way it sounds. The interior is is improved. And obviously, Shmi 150 owns one of these things. It's done so many miles on it, adores it. And this feels closer to the 60s car because as we discovered when we drove that original GT500, if you look back at what Shelby was all about and what that original Mustang was, it really punched above its weight and competed with the European cars, not only in racing, but out on the road. Then it felt like, well, the Mustang lost its way a bit, and whilst this, the second generation Mustang, did kind of pull on people's heartstrings visually, it, it was still a bit crap. Still a bit of a shed, and quite scary to drive when you got that much power, as we discovered. But, but this thing, it just, moved the ball back closer to the European rivals and so a Shelby variant again punches aggressively against something like I don't really know what I've been trying to think like what is this car's European rival you could say like an M4 CS or or a C63 but now that's got an awful engine in it I don't know because nothing is this powerful but just in terms of overpowered front engine GT but at least it's something which as I say gives the Americans to, something to be proud about and that continues that Shelby lineage and the GT500 badge I think stronger than the quite silly middle car. I would happily have one of these things. I think it's ace. Anyway, we're going to drive now back to uh, to the warehouse, I believe, where they've got some other cool bits knocking around. I'm feeling a little bit lethargic after the burgers and the fries. But despite the weather and the fact that we've just been doing true American driving, i.e. just highways and cities, it's been mega. At the moment, the 60s car is the winner, but that's because I'm, I'm an old soul, aren't I? Trapped in a young body. This is, this is a good second. And then the 2008 thing, what a weird thing. Didn't notice how much carbon fiber is in here. You know what, all of this makes me so excited for the latest generation Mustang, obviously the dark horse now out, what those, Shelby variants will be, I think, are pretty exciting. But yeah, the noise of this thing is just wild. Onwards then, to the warehouse. <laughs> it sounds outrageous. Well, welcome to the warehouse. <laughs> this is pretty impressive. Um, by the way, we ended our drive just in time because the rain had just started. Um, so we managed to get back here safely, all of us. That was a question mark <laughs> in those super snakes. But my God, is there a lot to admire in here. So yes, it's the Ryan Friedman Motor Cars Warehouse. Uh, been to the showroom uh, in some of my other days whilst I'm here in New York. But I mean, look at that, for example. 997 Turbo. Is that tan leather interior or red leather? I can't tell under the lights, but that is stunning. Very cool 996 Turbo cab. 
Uh, oh, GT3, I'm a, such a 996 fanboy. And there are so many 996s knocking around, but yeah, GT3 is very nice. And oh, look at this, the Millennium Edition car. This is a wild thing. It's Chroma Flare paint to celebrate 2000. It's a super rare car, it had wooden trim inside. Nice big old G-Wagon back there. Endless things, oh, seven, eight, no, uh, 981 Boxster Spider. Um, more Porsches everywhere. This is a lovely, I don't know what color that is, E46 M3. Oh, with the light gray interior, that is amazing. <gasps> gated, I can already see it. Gated, <laughs> look at me, I'm so American. Manual 360 Modern, another one that we've seen, with the tan interior, beautiful. M5, oh my god, these guys, this is, if I had a dealership, this is literally what the stock would look like. This is all my kind of stuff, it's basically perfect modern classics, DBS up there, I'm just going to assume it's manual, because it's so these guys' game. Um, got a lovely SL, got the flying spur, oh my god, this place is amazing, I'm not going to say it to their face, but I actually prefer it to their showroom. <laughs> and then of course, yes. The Shelbys, the lineup of Shelbys in, in and amongst Bahama Yellow 992 Touring. Um, all this Euro stuff, you've got the Americana in the middle. And something else back there lurking as well. And I have to say, it's been an amazing experience finally getting behind the wheel of some proper American muscle, especially the early 60s car. Got to say a huge thanks to these guys for arranging this day, but also allowing me access to the cars over the last few days. It's been super special. My takeaway is original Shelby GT500, absolute monster. Um, genuinely really enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to have to come back here because I feel like these guys are my kind of people. I'm now obsessing over that 996 GT3. I'm distracted. I'm staring at it and the Millennium Edition. I would, mm, I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go. This is going to get. This is going to get expensive. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the last couple of videos. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Stay subscribed for plenty more content to come.